Hello, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Salam Salom and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Qatar Biomedical Research Institute. I would like to thank you all for attending this webinar from our series of QBRI talks for early career researchers. In this webinar series, we explore valuable tips, lessons and unique career stories to inspire young researchers. If you missed our previous webinars, you could watch a recording on the HPKU YouTube channel. A couple of housekeeping rules. The microphone of all attendees uh, have been muted, but we invite you to submit your questions during the talk in the Q&A tab. If you are using a mobile uh, device, you will find the Q&A tab by clicking on the circle with the three dots as shown here. Please direct these questions to all panelists to make sure that your questions are presented to us. The webinar will be recorded and the link will be shared with you in a couple of days. The topic for today is about how a PhD degree can be a broad career path enabler. Our speaker today will highlight the broad range of career opportunities available for PhD graduates, including in research administration, as well as the steps to develop a major plan post PhD graduation. With this, I would like to welcome our speaker, Dr. Ayman Basir. Dr. Basil is a senior program manager at the Qatar National Research Fund or QNRF in the capacity building programs and the acting program manager in the, in the energy and environment pillar. He received his PhD from the Paul Sabadell University in France and worked as a postdoc in the uh, as a postdoc at the Aoyama Gakuin University in Japan. Before joining QNRF, he worked as an associate professor in physics at the Lebanese University. At QNRF, Dr. Basile has overseen the implementation of numerous programs such as Qatar Research Leadership Program, Graduate Scholarship Research Award, the Postdoctoral Research Award, and the Early Career Research Award. All these designed to develop skills critical for the effective operations of R&D, as well as addressing the need for qualified research personnel in Qatar. Dr. Basil uh, uh, also manages QNRF's undergraduate research experience program, uh, the conferences and workshops sponsorship programs, and the research exchange program. Dr. Basil, welcome. And thank you for your support to talk to us today. Uh, we are really excited uh, to hear from you today. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'll hand uh, over to you for uh, your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salam, uh, for your kind introduction and uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, when I was first approached by the organizers, um, a biomedical institute to deliver this talk, I was a bit uh, puzzled. First, because it has been a while that I moved completely from research and science to research administration. And second, because my background is really not related to the biomedical field. However, Dr. Salam, who has good communication skills, thankfully explained the goal of this session. And I became motivated and excited to deliver this talk dedicated for early career research scientists and the graduate students. So it's really nice to be here with you. It's a pleasure for me to discuss how a PhD can be a broad career path in age. Uh, Dr. Ayman, just if you can move the box in the middle. Sorry. I, I, I did. I think we are still uh, seeing like a, a gray box in the middle, maybe. Would you like to share, uh, share the presentation from your end?
I'm not sure if the other uh, panelists can see also the same box or I'm the only one. Yeah, we can uh, see the yeah. box. Uh, maybe Dr. Ayman, mm -hmm. if you can. Exactly. Okay, now, 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 it's it's now, it's now it's better. Perfect. Yes, perfect. So to continue, um, initially the PhD program was designed to develop academics. That's basically a license to teach at the university and become a faculty member. Of course, the aim of every graduate is to find really a permanent position. And due to the high competition and finding a direct or a permanent position in the academia, the first thing we do is we look for a postdoctoral opportunity. Postdoc positions are transitional positions meant to be high intensity periods of training where fellows um, develop and implement high impact programs or complete research projects. Postdocs are expected to conduct novel high quality research and demonstrate an outstanding uh, record of productivity in every single aspect of the training. If your target is the academia, when choosing your postdoctoral training, pay attention to the following. Uh, they work for me, they might also work for you. The topic area of the potential mentor or lab that you're planning to join. Again, in most of the cases, you are not in liberty to choose your topic, but rather you will try to find a niche area linked to the overall theme of the mentor. Therefore, you need to ensure that the topic that you are selecting is a la mode, is fashionable, is booming subject, where the van are being currently directed. This would ease the link to a permanent position at a later stage. Another aspect to consider is that it's better to move from your comfort zone. It's better to get your postdoctoral experience in a new lab, in a new environment, expanding your network, proving your research ability in different places is always a good sign for the recruit. A third point I'm hearing it. Dr. Salam? Yes, Dr. Is anyone, is everyone muted? Yes, everyone. Are you are you hearing that you, No, no, it's maybe now I'm hearing I will mute my head. Okay. okay. A third point to consider is the industry. Nowadays, universities are interested in recruiting faculty members with industrial experience. This can be obtained during your PhD. Actually, many PhD projects are currently offered in collaboration with the industry. Even some of the agencies or scholarships, such as Marie Curie Fellowship, would highly rank an applicant if there is an industrial player or an industrial affiliation to the project. If this wasn't the case for you, Try to do the postdoc in applied setup that has a direct link with the industry or join the industry for your postdoc. Keep in mind, industry is a door open. In my case, after finishing uh, my PhD in France, nanotechnology was the keyword, was the buzzword in my field. It was very popular. Lots of fund uh, and openings were directed uh, to this area. So I opted to do my postdoc in Japan, where really some advanced research in the field was taking place. 
the topic was in collaboration with two uh, big corporations, uh, Fujitsu Siemens and NEC. I believe that this experience eased my recruitment at the Lebanese University, knowing that they were launching a, a new program in material and nanomaterial science, and they were also investing in a research platform in the field. Now, is the academia the only option for me as a PhD graduate? Am I limiting my options if I do my PhD? What if I didn't like academia or simply couldn't find a job? What's going to happen? We all asked ourselves these questions and had our doubts. So for that, please keep in mind during your PhD or postdoctoral training, you have learned, learned a number of useful skills that can be applied to a wide, if not all, uh, industry position. For example, you have written abstracts, papers, books, your thesis manuscript. Accordingly, you know how to prepare a concise and logic materials and documents. You have communicated in conferences or presented your work in your lab, in your department. Uh, even you have defended your thesis in front of a jury. I also bet that you had to explain your complex topic to your family, to your friends, uh, using a, a layman language, using basic terms. So really think about it. You have developed your writing and oral communication skills. Everyone had to do literature review. You had to uh, analyze and understand large amount of information. Or during your research, you have designed an experiment, a plan, or a model that defines a problem or a hypothesis, tested potential solutions, and implemented them, formed and defended independent conclusions. Also, you have definitely encountered a problem in your research and tried to identify uh, possible causes and potential solutions. All of this basically analytical thinking and problem solving. Do you currently see any scientific paper or publication that is single author? You are definitely collaborating with others on your project. You are, you are often interacting with your mentor or with your uh, supervisor and dealing with positive or negative feedbacks. You might have been involved in mentoring subordinates or exchanging skills with fellow colleagues. Here you go. You have developed your interpersonal and leadership skills. Well, earning a PhD means that you have successfully managed your project from the beginning till the end. You have successfully identified your goals and completed them in a realistic time. And this is basically project management and organization. We have all identified sources of information that are applicable to our research. We analyze samples, we have collected data. Some of you even were involved in designing and analyzing surveys. So you are now skilled in research and information management. We are used to work under pressure and meet deadlines. Exams, upgrade, viva, defense. And during our postdoctoral training, we are also trained to work effectively and with limited supervision. And this is really self-management and organization. Moreover, during your PhD or postdoc, you might have been involved in and grants and proposal writings, teaching, mentoring younger grad students, filing patents, organization of a conference, participation in committees. You are mastering a software or you have developed a code or algorithm 
for your research. All these skills and activities can help you really explore what you really like and hopefully be able to choose the exact career path for you that you would like to follow. Nowadays, becoming a lecturer is not the only reason for taking a doctor. Since a PhD has a broader career outside the academia. In fact, education policy in the UK, seven out of 10 PhD holders are no longer working in academia after three and a half years of obtaining their degree. So uh, stay calm, rest assured, if you think that uh, academia is not the best route for you, you, you won't be uh, left alone. Uh, there is many Liverpool uh, supporters here. Uh, that said, please don't consider this talk that I'm advocating for early career researchers and scientists to quit research, but rather uh, for you really to know what you enjoy and what's available for you in the market. Even in the world of academia, there is some non-academic jobs or career that you might consider. As an example, be part of the central research office. If you were involved in the grants writing, developing a document, summarizing the aims and goals, the techniques and skills needed for the success of the project, you were able to convince reviewers by the importance of the suggested topic and potential outcome, you feel that number is something, is something you enjoy, you are able to put a coherent uh, budget in place, then grant writing is something to consider. Of course, part of the research office role is to search for relevant calls uh, and programs, uh, advertise for it uh, among professor, faculty members, uh, to submit proposals that they get awarded, um, another function of the office is to ensure that the requirements of the funding agency are met during the post-award phase. Almost all universities and major research offices are having IP innovation and tech transfer office. In such role, you will be able to connect the academic research with the industry development. Your role will be to identify promising technologies, manage intellectual property portfolio, search for opportunities for licensing these inventions, and facilitating the foundation uh, and the, the, the formation of startups based on the university's uh, research. Worth noting that um, for this role, a postgraduate diploma might be of a great addition. The role of a business development person is to find potential market for protected inventions and be responsible for creating partnerships with the industry, sell solutions, propose relevant training and workshops to the industry or community. Uh, vocational programs, uh, secure endowments, um, attract sponsors. I would say that a proper network and maintaining a healthy relation with decision makers is key for such role or position. Moving away from academia, nowadays, industry can be considered as a main recruit. You can join uh, their R&D team. Probably this is the most popular option among all STEM PhDs uh, who join the industry. You will be working on impactful projects and innovative ideas to solve current problems uh, with direct uh, tangible outcomes 
like contributing uh, to finding a cure. In addition, you don't have to worry about teaching, uh, grants, funding, publishing. For product managers are available for PhDs in most technology-based sectors, including um, IT, electronics, uh, and of course, biotech and pharmaceuticals. They are usually responsible for managing the entire life cycle of an innovative product from development to market. So, for example, they are responsible for analyzing the product performance in the market and determine a way to increase its success. As you can tell, product managers' roles are multifunctional and they tend usually to collaborate with different teams in the organizations, including R&D, including marketing, including sales team. Another angle that you might be interested in is the technical commercial side, sort of a technical salesperson that would be easier for him to communicate with the researchers and other customers. Of course, to sell the company products or services, whether big equipment, uh, softwares, uh, reagents, solutions. Your role would be to ensure that the customers are using your product to the full extent by providing support and training. Obviously, for such role, uh, interpersonal uh, skills and communication skills are much needed. As mentioned, PhDs excel at understanding complex technologies, which is crucial to technology-based sectors such as biotech and other fields also, uh, softwares, uh, electronics, aeronautics. We have talked briefly about this role in the academia. Uh, the role of a business development manager in the industry would be to develop new business opportunities, manage existing products, uh, develop market strategies, and building uh, new partnerships. So the technical understanding of the company's technology and product specifications are really essential for this role. In addition, for such position, you are required to use a combination of scientific knowledge, analytical skills, and market trends to forecast uh, things like um, revenues, uh, profit and losses, so on and so forth. Your communication skills are also uh, needed for such position because you are expected to present uh, to management on a regular basis. Operation research analysts are responsible for investigating complex issues, identifying and solving operational problems, and facilitating um, a more cost-effective and efficient functioning of the organization. So, uh, for such role, problem solving is key. Also, you must be able to use data mining techniques, um, mathematical modeling, uh, statistical analysis to provide operational guidance uh, to large companies such as biotech companies. For data scientist positions, um, the person would require a really strong background in programming. He will use various data mining techniques to predict results with a huge amount of data. So basically, the goal of such a person is to turn collected data into intelligence. The data can be collected or generated from social media transactions, um, news, healthcare, retail, 
and of course the different apps that we use on a daily basis. Uh, their findings are usually crucial for decision making and for strategies. Another route that is currently growing is the technology scouting. The role of such a person is to study and monitor the market in order to advise the companies on the research areas that they need to invest in, their resources. Uh, for such position, uh, analytical thinking and analyzing uh, data are also important. In any technology-based industry, continuous innovation and development of a new product is key to maintain success. All ongoing projects on research and an R&D division needs to be managed properly in order to control uh, expenditures, um, ensure a timely completion of the projects, uh, achieve the required results. As a program manager, you would oversee the process and techniques used by the researchers. Uh, you would ensure that uh, financial support is being utilized properly and make sure that the project are in alignment with the long-term strategy of the organization. Regulatory affairs. With the growing complexity and continuous evolution of regulatory laws, advanced degrees with deep scientific knowledge are an increasing demand for uh, regulatory law, uh, roles. This mostly consists of documentation, filing regulatory paperwork, and ensuring that the organization is following uh, the correct regulatory guidance. For example, your role would be to bridge uh, the gap between the R&D of a clinical product and uh, its regulatory approval. Of course, uh, in this case, a detailed knowledge of the uh, regulatory requirements and, for example, uh, the development uh, life cycle of a drug are very much needed for such roles. Another area that PhD holders are joining is the science writing or science communication. Of course, this is um, a broad career where you will have the ability uh, to stay up to date with the new innovations as you communicate science uh, to a wide, wide range of audience. So uh, if you are uh, the kind of a person who really enjoys uh, researching information and writing about it, uh, this is, uh, might be the ideal uh, career for you. So from editors to scientific journalism uh, or scientific content uh, for TV production, a PhD graduate is able to benefit from his technical skills to summarize and present an interesting topic to the general public. Also, uh, uh, newspapers and magazines uh, rely on science journalists to keep up with the recent publications and turn these into a lighter and a clearer version. A, a, wide, a wide variety of organizations ranging from tech industry uh, to market research uh, firms require the services of professionals who have the combination of scientific knowledge and writing skills. The idea is for them to produce uh, materials for a variety of purposes that would be uh, to communicate with investors. Uh, advertising products, uh, writing manuals, and of course, uh, to maintain uh, a social media uh, presence. To be more specific, 
and in line with the background of most of the audience uh, attending this talk today, uh, I chose uh, medical communication specialists who are broadly described as technical writers involved in the development and production of medical and healthcare related materials. As, as a medical communication specialist, your responsibilities will include writing and editing materials that health, healthcare organizations uh, will use to communicate with patients, uh, with clients, uh, and medical professionals. In addition to writing communication skills, medical communication specialists uh, must have a strong understanding of the ethical and regulatory guidelines in their field. We have talked about the academia and the industry. Another sec sector that uh, you might consider is the public sector. For governmental positions, you can join the health ministry or an environmental department. Your role would include policy making, uh, science policy and strategies. This sort of translation a role whereby you would analyze the needs and gaps of a country and recommend the right solutions, guidelines, policies, strategies. Your understanding of complex problems helps to make informed choices in this role. Also under this category, I would like to highlight the positions that are available at funding agencies such as um, program officers and program managers. In this role, you will always be close to the science without really doing any science work yourself. Your role would be to develop programs and activities to serve the research and scientific community, define priority areas, prepare goals, ensure transparent evaluation, uh, follow up on awarded proposals to ensure a successful outcome, for the funded project, all these activities are needed uh, for a funding agency. I'm confident that many of you were intrigued and thought about consultancy jobs. If you know how to manage large amount of data, these companies will be an excellent choice for you. STEM PhDs are in high demand for consulting positions because they have strong technical background and are specifically trained in troubleshooting difficult problems. Uh, as a management consultant, you will be required to leverage your problem solving skills. You will also be required to uh, design unique strategies. A management consultant must be team players and know, we say, how to find their way uh, around people. In addition, uh, presentation skills are uh, key uh, for such uh, positions as they, as they will have to present uh, more often to uh, clients, whether written documents or via PowerPoint presentations. In many cases, PhD graduates would prefer a job or industry based on their PhD subject or in relation uh, to the area of their studies. So usually we can see that arts PhD holders, for example, they would consider uh, publishing and events. Um, Earth scientists probably, they prefer uh, environmental protection. Uh, chemists would be intrigued by uh, food technology. In this slide, I would like to highlight some of the careers that you might consider or explore. And again, keep in mind, if you do make a choice, you don't need to stick to it to the rest of your life. You can change career throughout your life. So it's, it's very important to pursue your interest and enjoy what you do.
also as a PhD, you can learn and interpret data better and faster than many people. It's one of your most valuable skills. It can really be applied to most, if not all, positions. When I moved from academia to research management as a research analyst, I had to deal with set new business and, and, and languages, business and budget planning, CAPEX, uh, OPEX, uh, developing programs, policies, procedures, even to develop a logo, it's called a corporate identity, and it's a document bigger than my PhD thesis manuscript. However, we are fast learners, and we definitely have the skills to research, to grasp, and master any role. Some skills you might already have, others will come with the job, that's it. In order to consider a job or a role, start with your most developed skills. Do you enjoy writing or do you prefer oral presentation? Do you enjoy um, analyzing data or do you prefer mentoring and teaching? After that, define your priorities. Are you looking for high salaries? Then the industry and commercial roles are good options. If you prefer to work in an office or you are married and you don't want to get divorced, then stay away from consultancy and sales jobs. If job security is your priority, governmental agencies and tenure positions are good options. If public speaking is your thing, you might consider science communication. If management is the buzzword for you, then try agencies or product managers or business development managers. If research is your passion, you should join the R&D team. Some other consideration might be linked to the company that you are applying to rather than the job description itself. Would you prefer multinational and multicultural companies, big corporations? Uh, is there any uh, clear career path for me? So on and so forth. So there is no magic portion that fits all jobs. Therefore, it's important first to believe in our abilities. We have numerous useful skills and we are fast learners. Second, between a PhD and a postdoctoral training, you have ample of time. You need to benefit from your time and explore and try things. We all heard or said, it's not the right time for me now to deliver a talk. I need to focus or concentrate on my experiment or why my supervisor is giving me this task. It's his job, not mine. Actually, I advise you to participate in small grants, assist professors, teach, contribute to developing uh, a course content, participate in, in committees, organize uh, conferences, spend some time in the industry. We at QNRF, we have developed uh, a mobility grant for that. Really, all these activities would allow you to well position yourself with a strong and solid CV and the credentials. For the networking, we always said when you go to a conference, of course, you need to meet the people, chat with them, build relationships, create and maintain collaborations because your, not, your network can play uh, a major role in your success. I would like to add to this portion 
that we are lucky in Doha, that after really attending few and specific events, we would really get the chance to meet most, if not all, main players from different sectors. In addition, when you participate in an international conference, we usually see some people sitting in, in, in small booths with flyers or behind the table. These can be publishers, um, biotech companies. If they are there, these companies are the right one for you also to explore. You can chat with the person uh, describing the product. Uh, he is probably uh, the technical commercial person in that company or he's someone from the communication and marketing team. So uh, try as much as possible to understand from them and interact with them. When it comes to CVs and letters, again, there is no uh, specific standard or format uh, that fits all positions. We usually put our publications, uh, impact factor, edge index, and this is really true if we're applying to uh, faculty positions, to, an academ to academia in general. However, if you're planning to apply for a sales role, uh, for example, it's much better to put uh, the techniques that you know uh, and uh, your communication skills before your uh, publications. The last point is the interview. All what we have talked about really culminates with the interview. You need to be well prepared. You need to do your homework and read about the company or organization that you are applying to. Tap into your network. Try to ask your network about uh, the company philosophy, uh, work environment, things they value the most, insider steps. These are usually very useful. On a final note, I hope that I was really able to highlight a few options in different uh, sectors, but I'm confident that there are many more uh, in the market. So really uh, earning a PhD can open a large variety of opportunities and more importantly, I would say uh, the world is counting on your training and knowledge to create additional jobs and opportunities uh, for others and for the economy. Thank you for your time. That's it from my end. Um, I really uh, wish QBRI all the success with all its activities and, and programs. I'm returning the floor to Dr. Salman. Thank you so much, Dr. Basser, for this great presentation and uh, this uh, overview. Uh, personally, I didn't know that uh, all these uh, positions are also like uh, available for uh, PhDs. Sometimes we focus so much on academia and we don't know that uh, that there are uh, there are many other uh, positions also available for us. So thank you so much. It was really very useful. Uh, we will now begin the, the Q&A session, but uh, before I would like to remind our audience to please uh, direct uh, the questions using the uh, all panelist option to make sure that uh, the questions are visible to us. So uh, to begin our Q&A, um, I, I'm uh, wondering, uh, Dr. Ayman, uh, what uh, thoughts you might have um, as we can see, there's an increase uh, in the PhD uh, uh, graduates, which is uh, not proportional with the academic positions available, as we were, as we were discussing. So for those who are uh, thinking to switch to a non-academic uh, sector, um, for instance, the industry where there are many uh, positions available, uh, but they are feeling um, like it's kind of a risk, especially because they lack maybe the experience. So what's uh, what's your advice for them? Again, um, for most of the roles, uh, as I have explained, uh, you don't need really 
specific experience, uh, you have the, the main skills. Um, some skills you already have, the others you will be able to, to learn uh, throughout the job itself. Uh, I spoke about my experience uh, when I moved first from academia to uh, research administration. Uh, I didn't take any course beforehand. Uh, I do some research I, uh, to understand the administration language, the business language. Uh, you will put some efforts, but again, um, as a PhD holders, we are trained really to research and grasp any type of information. So uh, if we remove some really specific um, positions, such as um, IP, for example, or uh, probably uh, regulatory affairs, where you need sometimes a postgraduate diploma basically related to law uh, in order to understand some legal aspects, uh, for other type of uh, of positions, uh, you can uh, switch immediately. Yeah, I guess we can always use our transferable skills that we we have, but we maybe we don't know that we have until we switch to another sector. Um, my next question is connected to this previous point um, and about your personal uh, your journey. Uh, what, what or who supported, uh, let's say, encouraged you to do this uh, transition uh, to research administration, especially that you had, like, a, let's say, a position, a good position in academia as an associate professor? Uh, did you have, like, a career advisor from academia and non-academic sectors? In other words, uh, let's say, what was helpful for you to, this, to do this transition? Uh, in my case, specifically, uh, I, I, I had to leave Lebanon, if you want, and leave my positions there uh, due to the uh, uh, political instability in, in the region. So uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to, to build uh, a family uh, under all this pressure. So I, I started uh, to see what's available in the region and see where I can uh, contribute. When I was, when I first uh, saw uh, what's going uh, on in Qatar, and mm -hmm. it was back in 2008, it was the, uh, really the initial establishment of, of uh, research in general in, in Qatar. I was really uh, in love with this uh, vision uh, and passionate to, to join and be part of this uh, big plan that they are trying to achieve. And to tell you the truth, when I first came to Qatar, I, I didn't think that uh, I have completely shifted or moved to research administration. I came here initially, we were setting up the research institute. I thought, okay, it's fine, one or two years, I will jump back to, uh, to research. But again, uh, I was, uh, happy with what I was doing, I had the experience, and I started really to develop programs. And I enjoyed really when developing programs and uh, seeing myself helping the community also give me uh, some uh, internal uh, happiness. Yeah, I mean, we can see that that you are passionate about also your, your job and uh, your actual career. Thank you, Dr. Rayman. Uh, so let's go over the questions from the audience. I think we have quite uh, quite a lot. Okay, the first question: the chances here in Qatar after obtaining a PhD are very limited, and most PIs go for experienced postdocs rather than newly graduates. For someone who's planning to have a career in Qatar, what's your advice? Uh. When, when we're talking first, uh, let me put, when we're talking about experienced postdocs, again, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, postdocs are meant to be transitional phase. Uh, it's not advisable for someone to stick uh, or keep doing a postdoc after a postdoc uh, for a while. I mean, uh, the goal uh, and the aim of every graduate is to find a permanent position. If you're stuck uh, within uh, the postdoctoral life for a long time, you need to think seriously about how to shift your career. This is the first option. Second, now, if we're looking into 
Qatar and uh, about possibilities and opportunities. Um, if I take only uh, Qatar Foundation as an example, we have at least a couple of universities focusing on the biomedical. Uh, we're talking about HPKU and we have Wild Cornell. Uh, we have a research institute, QBRI. Uh, we have a Biobank. We have a Wish. We have a funding agency. We have uh, a technology park. We have an RDI division and we have uh, a council. I hope I didn't uh, miss anything, but I really believe that we have uh, a big variety of options yes, and okay. opportunities to follow uh, and follow. Yeah, sure. I also agree with you com and compared with other maybe places. So next uh, question. A really an impressive talk. How can a PhD student improve his entrepreneurial skills? And what is your stance on working as a freelancer uh, after a PhD? Um, is the skills matter more than the impact factor in this regard? Now, again, uh, I just gave the example uh, Having a uh, Qatar Science Technology Park uh, within Education City, it's a great addition. And on yearly basis, they are developing uh, a set of programs, workshops, activities, training. Uh, and I really encourage uh, whether PhD students, early career scientists to benefit from this experience. Even if uh, they don't tend to go in that direction, it's always important for them to understand uh, what does it mean. Because even as, as researchers, uh, we might be, and uh, I hopefully uh, many of you will be involved in, in, in patenting and, and finding something valuable and hopefully selling that product or uh, thinking about a startup. So for the first part, uh, again, uh, QSCP are doing a fantastic job here and we should be really uh, benefiting from that. For, for the freelancer, I'm afraid I, I didn't uh, understand well, uh, but if you're meaning a freelancer, for example, for some of the journals or magazines, uh, uh, or to be able to produce uh, booklets, flyers, yes, you can definitely do it. Uh, even you can do it if, as a freelancer, even if you have a position, you feel that you can spend a few hours uh, weekly to, to to give such information, you can sp uh, still do it. Yes, I think we can have the next question. Uh, is a PhD necessary for a career in grant research administration? So, um, if we are talking about a research office at, at the university, um, if to join, for example, uh, junior or mid-career level, I would say, and pre-award and post-award, or if you're joining um, sort of uh, support functions like compliance, no, you don't need a PhD to assume this role. However, if you're in grants writing or you're leading the team, Definitely here, a PhD uh, is very much needed, as your role will be to advise scientists, to assist them with, with their writings. Um, in, in Arabic, we say, uh, I hope you will be able to translate that better than me. Uh, you need to have a full understanding of the full process, of the full mechanism, in order really uh, to explain well to scientists and uh, to be able to assist them. Uh, in addition, not, not you know, to, 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 to mention uh, usually our, our ego as scientists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, I mean, the, the PhD is also like always carrying, as you said before, like a lot of uh, skills that uh, we are maybe not aware, like solving problem, and, uh, project management, uh, yeah, many skills that are really needed in uh, in this position. 
Um, okay, so we can have the next question. Yes. How does uh, one transition from a bench-based uh, research career to research administration? Uh, and do you require additional courses in administration? I think this is related to the previous one. Yes. So um, I mentioned that in my case, uh, I, I, I didn't get any postgraduate diploma. Uh, but in certain areas, uh, it's very much needed. Mm. Um, in order to take uh, a postgraduate diploma, uh, in most of the cases, it's better to do it while on the job. Uh, having the experience for that type of postgraduate diploma, it's much more beneficial than taking them uh, before joining uh, the position itself. Because uh, the goal of the postgraduate diploma will be really uh, to polish and enhance certain skills, uh, but it won't really be of a great addition uh, before uh, getting relevant experience in the area. Yes, I agree. Uh, okay, next question for jobs at grant funding agency. Uh, does an advanced degree get your CV noticed versus a basic degree with several years of work experience? Again, uh, for, for certain positions, uh, and here I'm talking about uh, technical scientific positions. Mm -hmm. uh, your CV won't be uh, selected if you don't have a PhD, because for these positions, uh, your role would be to interact, to develop programs for scientists and researchers, uh, to chair uh, panels of scientists and uh, researchers, uh, define priority areas, follow up on uh, awarded proposals, so here, definitely, you need a PhD. And other uh, type of roles, such as, uh, again, uh, supporting with uh, pre and post award or uh, being part of the uh, financial compliance team or the legal aspect. Here, yes, here, uh, relevant years of experience uh, will be noticed. Next question. Uh, do you recommend gaining work experience after an undergraduate degree before pursuing a PhD? Maybe between different sectors like industry yeah. and uh, academia. So. Yeah, usually students who are interested in pursuing graduate studies, they would have developed uh, their passion during their undergraduate studies. They are participating in research projects. Um, you have mentioned that in, in your introduction. We at QNRF, we have uh, Europe to support uh, these students. Um, even during uh, their final year project, uh, they would uh, get the chance to experience or refine uh, the research area of their interest. So for research-based graduate studies, I would recommend students to continue directly. They are still in, in the system. They have the momentum. Even if at a later stage, uh, they don't feel happy with the topic that they chose, they can still uh, change the topic between the master, de uh, master degree and, and the PhD. Um, for the alternative option, which is gaining work experience again the experience uh, needs to be relevant meaning that uh, that person will be sitting in r d facility doing almost the same uh, job or function uh, but without getting uh, any diploma so really uh, for me uh, research uh, is, is different than getting uh, an mba or other business related uh, specializations where work experience is uh, really needed beforehand. And that's why uh, what I said, even if you jump to uh, research administration, there is no need to take your uh, MBA or other type of uh, research diploma, uh, sorry, administrative diploma beforehand. It's better to do it on the job. Perfect, this was very useful advice. Uh, so, in the interest of time, 
will conclude today's webinar by thanking uh, you, Dr. Ayman, for taking the time. Uh, it was really a very uh, inspiring to hear from you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for all the, the advices. And uh, thank you to the audience for joining uh, us today. As always, if there are other, to other topics that uh, you would like the, us to cover in the future webinars, uh, please uh, send us an email. Uh, also, thank uh, thanks very much for, to the great uh, team running the show behind the scenes, Dr. Adviti, a fellow postdoc, Mr. Ahmad, and Mrs. Uh, Reem from the QBRI Communication Office. Uh, have a great afternoon, everyone. Stay safe, stay well, and stay inspired. Thank you. Thank you.